Waste Disposal here is a posing force map that I'm particularly fond of. Uh, I like the really more small, compact size. It's probably of all the default uh, posing force maps here, it's by far the smallest. You can't play this with more than 8 people, really, maybe 12, but anything more than that just gets way too chaotic. Um, and I just like the weapon placements and general, it just, it's, it's well done. It's just really well done, definitely top 3. Uh, David Kelvin, or David, I guess his nickname is David Kelvlar Kelvin in this game. Uh, he's had a career, I gotta say. Um, just looking at his credits. Obviously he did this, but just looking at it, um, he's worked on Blood to the Chosen, which, you know, that's not particularly a good thing to be proud of if you ever played that game. Uh, but he's also done the Wheel of Time, again, another game and you should be proud of, but it's a little bit better. Uh, but moving on to some more interesting stuff. He worked on the first mission, the, I guess the only mission pack for Unreal. He worked on motherfucking Return to Castle Wolfenstein and the console ports, I believe, which is awesome because that game kicks ass. Um, he's done. He worked on Doom Three: Resurrection of Evil, which is great. He's done Quake Wars. Uh, he helped a little bit with the 2010 Medal of Honor, which is a pretty cool thing. And and for some of his bigger credits, he's done work on Black Ops Three as one of the designers and the fourth Black Ops, which you know, regardless of what you feel about the Call of Duty games, it's still pretty big stuff. Oh, yeah, and um, I guess, uh, what is it? Did he work on uh, Doom? F it's saying there's another Doom game he worked on, but I'm not too sure about that. He did a lot of stuff, basically, as you can tell. He's, he's still active in the industry, actually. So, yeah, good for, good for him. See, and I like this title also, too. I gotta give him credit. Waste Disposal. There's waste in this map. It all makes sense. It's not like Untimely Demise or, like, you know... Repent. Well, I guess repent was going for repentagram, but you know immediately what the hell the fucking maps about got it There's no ambiguity. I like it This is an odd rant. I'm gonna go t kill myself later. Anyway, um, so you grab the shotgun the AR get all these nice supplies There's an outside. There's outside areas and there's indoor areas and then there's the waste disposal So there's like kind of three themed areas get the rocket launcher here and bring the pain to anyone that wants to hang out outside That's about it for outside. So we're moving into the indoor area for a bit Grab the SMG, especially if the AR too, it can be really dangerous in these tight quarters, but I don't really need to tell you that. Get some med kits, always important. And this is like where like the center of the map is, kind of leads off into other spots. Um, if you start here, there is uh, some AR grenades and the shotgun here, so be careful. But grab that as soon as you can. We'll talk about the bottom area soon, because that relates to the waste disposal. Let's go back this way. So if you start over here, grab the some, like, grab some pistol ammo, could be really helpful immediately on. Grab that med kit. The uh, deagle is here, so you want to make use of that, obviously. And back to the outside real quick is where you'll get the gauze. There ain't really any places the gauze jump except um, up in this area here. I kill myself all the time, by the way, like trying to gauze jump. You can hang out on these little rails. You can't really hide up here, but it can give you a little, like, I guess, a little place to go, like give you an advantage. And yeah, this leads back to that uh, place we started earlier. So let's talk about the waste thing. As you can see, there's a button here. There's also snarks here. But they're not spawned in right now, so you want to use those if you just, like, spawn up. And as, um, the civilian just showed, if you press that button, that floods the, uh, area down there. And obviously, if you happen to be in that area when that happens, you're probably gonna die. You know, you can put probably put two and two together without me telling you that, though. So let's hop down here. If you come down here, you got some ammo. I think you get some, uh, either satchels or claymore. I can't remember exactly. Us. Alright, claymores. That's where you get the claymores. Obviously, you got the station for health and charging. Very important as the civilian showed it. You're my buddy right now, civilian. You're trying to help me with my presentation. Thank you very much. Come this way. Get shot. Or, I guess, get, take fall victim to the thing that you were talking about earlier. That's really nice. Civilian's gonna come show me here. Uh, come with me now. So you can show this where you can grab the machine gun. So that's your basic incentive for coming down this way. Really, he's following me. I'm not even. Uh, like, this was not planned. This particular bot is just following me. And that's funny. Anyway, yeah, come this way. We gotta keep going. You're my, you're my buddy right now. Um, you got this way to get the shock trooper, which, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine, it's nice, but, you know, it doesn't have any water in this map, so you can't, like, irritate the fuck out of everyone. This is where you get the satchel coming. I just watched a bunch of Civvy, so I'm trying to talk to it like him right now, I know, funny. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's about it for this map. Like I said, real small, short and simple, I like it, I play a lot. I've spent, like, 30 minutes at one point, one late night, just playing this, but, like, with, like, two, three other bots pretending I was, like, in a split-screen game. I don't know, I don't know why I'm telling you this. This map is so close to working perfectly and had default Half-Life, however, uh, there's just too many few weapons overall and like, you know, especially the bottom part of the map. 
Because you, like, not only do you not have the machine gun or the shock roach, about the roach down there, but obviously the room with the satchels is pointless because the satchels don't work in Half-Life. It's so close to working. If you could just cut out, like, the top part and just leave, like, everything, or cut out the bottom part with the, like, you know, the waste pit and, like, you know, the, that area, this would have been great in Half-Life. It would have been a great little, like, six-player, eight-player map, but it's just, it's not, no cigar, unfortunately. Still hell of a lot of fun, though, so I'm going to vaguely recommend it. I'm going to say most people shouldn't do this, but if you absolutely need another Half-Life Deathmatch map, maybe put try this one and shot it. At least, at least the Claymores work, but of course the bots don't know how to use the Claymore, so if here just took it away from me. Thank you very much, bitch. So yeah, there's absolutely no reason to go through there. Don't even bother. Because obviously the Waste Trap still works just fine. That's got nothing to do with like half opposing force entities. Also, there's no revolver over here, so this part is completely useless. At least the gods still works, of course, in the rocket launcher, so you got a lot of weapons to use. That's what I mean, it is so goddamn close. I mean, you can still gauze around if you want to. This is probably the best opposing fort uh, map for snarks, because once you leash the snarks here, there's just, like, no place that you can get away from. You can't even get up here, by the way. I've been up there when the snarks have been active, and they will totally just jump up there. It's crazy. Sorry, civilian. I know we were friends earlier, but now I gotta bring the pain to you. Sorry, Brev. It's the way it is. I know. Painful. I like how there's ladders here, but I'm pretty sure this is, like, near insta-kill. Yeah. I mean, it's still nice that they thought, like, Dave thought of a way for you to actually get out of there if you fall there, but you're not gonna live long enough. So thanks, but no thanks. Oh, well. See, if this were a Quake map, that would totally have been a lava pit. I mean, DM3 in, um, Quake has, uh, like, a lava trap. It doesn't, the lava doesn't rise, but you, like, a floor opens up and you fall in it. You know the map I'm talking about if you played that game. It's famous deathmatch map. Oh, that was a funny shot, actually. I don't know why. So, yeah, actually, I changed my mind after playing it again. Actually, no, I do recommend this, even with the lack of weapons and the bottom being useless. Try it out in Half-Life. You know what's even more impressive is that this is one of the very first uh, attempts at a Half-Life map that uh, David ever made. Along with the next map, or the last of the uh, default uh, deathmatch maps, which I'm not actually sure I'll be able to play. I don't know if JK Body can handle it, but if you... If we do, then I'll obviously do a video on it. Because, you know, that's that's what I'm going to do. That's how I do things, damn it. Just realized I forgot to set a time limit because I'm a fucking idiot. My bad. You know, as much as I like Civvy's video on Half-Life, even though I don't necessarily agree with all the points he made about it, I'm so pissed that he somehow didn't reset, like, he didn't actually set the point of view higher than in, like, you know, it, got, it defaults to when you play in widescreen. Because this is one of those, like, when this game initially launched in, like, 98, I don't recall there in the, uh... Original box version being an option to um, use like widescreen resolutions. It was immediately just always 4.3, right? And I don't think it would probably work if you man like custom set it to um, widescreen. I'm not sure, but anyway, they they like you can select widescreen in the Steam version now. But guess what? It's like one of those crappy early ones where it squishes the vertical field of view, so everything's squished in. You can't see the like the uh, weapon models in the entirety, and the game just looks like cramped. You know, I'm probably, I, I swear to God, I'm not trying to suck my own dick here, but I swear I'm the only person on YouTube ever that apparently knows to, like, to set the point of view higher, so it's actually matching, so, like, the 4.3. I, I moved it up from, like, 90 to 1.6, which makes it, like, match the 4.3, like, you know, field of view resolution. I know, I'm, like, the Civi didn't do that. I remember when Retro Ahoy, um, did that, or just Ahoy. He, he had, like, occasionally Half-Life footage in his videos, and he didn't set it higher there either. And, like, you know, Ahoy's really professional. And I swear there's more examples. No one da fucking knows to set the resolution higher except for, I mean, the point of view higher except for me. Why? I'm, the, like, the, the complete opposite of, like, you know, somebody you should be, like, trusting as a professional. And I got this right. It's a shame, damn it. I keep killing myself in a particular Neko arc, I think, bubbles at the same time. It's weird. Sick headshot. Oh, you're just jelly about that, Chester. Get the fuck back here! Oh! Got a hankered for some bullets! I mean, shells! I mean, fucking wrong mascot! Here, have some snark. Oh god, I pressed the wrong button! Guys, there's a rocket launch right there. Was that a double kill? Man, I'm on fire! Look at that! 
on top of the leaderboard. Wow, I'm gonna complain to- I'm gonna break all my friends on the Xbox Live. The greatest thing about Xbox Live isn't showing you beating the games. It's showing everyone online I did. I'm just bullying Nick Art Bubbles tonight. It's just tragic. I'm- Did I- I killed myself with my rocket after I'd been blown back by the pushback by the shock bolts. Did you see that? It like hit like something out of the roof or something. I have no idea. Yeah, this map is dope. Um, waste disposal. Everyone and their mom should be playing this one. <laughs>